Hello everyone, I'm Siddharthan. In this video, let's understand how does a transformer model works and how does it powers today's large language models such as GPT, Gemini Pro, Grok and Llama. So this will be the agenda for today's video and let's get started. So this is a simple definition of what a transformer model is. A transformer is a neural network that learns the context of sequential data and generates new data out of it. So this is like a simple explanation of what is a transformer model. So it takes in a sequence of data as input. So it can be like a text or a prompt that you are asking it and it generates the data out of it. So let's say that you are pasting a paragraph in chat GPT and you are asking it to summarize. So this is a sequential data and this takes this as the input. And now the output it's going to generate for you is uh, the summary of this right so this is like a simple explanation so all it does is it tries to understand the context of the sequential data that you are giving us input and generates the output sequence just like uh, you know our human does in natural language so let's understand how this transformer model came into picture in the first place Transformers were first developed to solve the problem of sequence transduction. So sequence transduction is what we have just now discussed. So it's sequence to sequence modeling where you give a sequence of data as input to the model and it's going to generate another sequence of data as output. So sequence transduction or neural machine translation, which means they are meant to solve any task that transforms an input sequence to an output sequence, right? So it's all about, uh, you know, giving it and getting out a sequence of data. So this is why they are called as transformers and they are used in this sequence transduction so this is about transformers and uh, the thing about transformers kind of uh, get widely known by the launch of the paper attention is all you need so this paper attention is all you need was uh, published by a bunch of scientists from google where they have used these transformer models for uh, basic translation tasks so uh, before this right so before the introduction of transformer models so we uh, relied heavily on recurrent neural networks for nlp tasks like uh, text classification or uh, you know translation and so on so rnn kind of add its own problem which we will discuss in the next slide but once transformer came it kind of uh, performed way better than uh, rnn could in like a lot of tasks so that's about it so now let's understand what are all the key advantages or the pillars of transformers that makes it like highly valuable and then we can discuss about the limitations of rnn maybe in a later video we can dive deeper into this about the architecture of the transformer itself so about this key advantages right so we have this concept of self-attention and that's what they have used it used it in the transformer model like that's what like they have given in this paper as well so self-attention is all about the ability of the model to weigh the important words so let's say you have a sentence that has like 20 or 30 words the transform models are able to uh, kind of determine which words are like really important by this method of self-attention so they give this weightage for this important words to determine which word is important so let's say that there is a sentence that says a cat is sitting on the wall so here the words that are important are probably like cat wall and sitting right so the self-attention is able to capture all the important words in the sentence so that's about the self-attention and then we have this positional encoding so the transformers doesn't have an inherent way to say that this is the position of the word in a sentence so in order to kind of solve that we have this part called as positional encoding where all the tokens or the words in the sentence are kind of encoded in respect to their position as well so that the model can now uh, can now know where a particular word sits in a sentence so this is kind of different when you consider a rnn model so rnn models are the recurrent neural networks works by works in a sequential manner where it kind of looks at one word at a time and remembers the previous uh, words that it has seen but we don't do that in the case of transformers so it kind of uses this positional encoding to like know the position of like all the words so it doesn't go by sequence by sequence or like word by word so that is like a key difference and then we have parallel processing so one of the reasons that rnn wasn't able to perform that well was they perform or basically they understand this data in a sequential manner and they kind of try to learn from it in a sequential manner and because of this it wasn't able to you know utilize or leverage the parallel processing power of the gpus effectively but when you think about a transformer right so it can do a lot of processes so it has the self-attention embedding and so on so all these processes can be done in a in, in a parallel way so that the transformer models were able to kind of train or learn from a large data set but if you are going with the rnn it's not able you you wouldn't be able to you know 
take advantage of the parallel processing computation power that we have with today's GPUs. And the architecture about this uh, transformer model is we have an encoder and a an decoder kind of an architecture. And when you just kind of think about it, right? So the encoder's primary task is to process the input sequence and transform it into a dense representation, which is just a vector representation and this captures the essential information so and then we have this decoder and the decoder's role is to generate this output uh, tokens so this generates this output tokens as a sequence so this output sequence is generated one token at a time and this is like using the encoder and information that is coming from the encoder and then we kind of have this entire sequence that comes out of this decoder so this is how it works so the first very important aspect is the self-attention where it kind of knows or it has this ability to know the weightage of the words in a sentence even if it is a long sentence it's going to be hard for a rnn but even when the sentence is long so the transformers can weigh the important words and then we have this positional encodings where again if you have a large sequence it has this ability to know the position because of the positional encoding that we do instead of like looking at it word by word uh, just like an rnn and then uh, because of uh, these different abilities it can do all these uh, tasks in a in a parallel way taking use of the gpus that we have and then we have an encoder which encodes all this information the input sequence and then the decoder which kinds of uh, infer from the encoded information and gives you an output sequence so this is like a basic explanation of how our transformer works and now in order to kind of appreciate this difference right so we need to understand how our rnn works and what are the limitations of the rnn rnn model so this slide is about that so let's now maybe understand in a simple way of how uh, rnn works so i have given this particular example imagine an rnn a recurrent neural network as a person reading a sentence word by word trying to understand the meaning as they go so an rnn looks at this sentence word by word and it tries to kind of understand the meaning as it learns the entire sentence as they read each word they remember a bit about what they have read so far that's their memory so we have a concept of memory in rnn where it kind of tries to remember the previous words it has kind of uh, learned so this memory helps them understand the next word better and so on until the end of the sentence so this process goes on so it looks at the word understand this and goes to the next next word but it has this memory of the previous word and this process goes on until until it learns this entire sentence but the problem with this is the challenge with rnn is that they might forget earlier information if the sentence is too long or they might become confused if there is too much information so this is like the biggest drawback of this as this kind of learns word by word it can kind of uh, forget this information or the memory that it has if the sentence is like long as like a paragraph and again we have this different variations of this uh, rnn's such as LSTM, which is long short term memory. And then we have this GRU. So this rectified this issue to an extent, but not to a larger extent. This is where the, you know, uh, transformers work in a different way. So instead of looking at it word by word, it kind of looks at this entire uh, sentence. So not directly, but by using this uh, positional encodings and the ability to weigh the words by using the self attention mechanisms, right? So we were able to do that. So now let's understand what are the actual limitations that RNN post so vanishing gradient problem so this is like one of the biggest issue so rnns are prone to the vanishing gradient problem where it means like the gradient right? So in the back propagation so gra gradients can shrink as it goes through the back propagation stage uh, and, and this makes it difficult for the rnn to kind of learn the dependencies between the words if again the text is long so it's going to be difficult in order to as, as if the sentences long you can think about it as, as like it's difficult for it to understand which words depends on which words in order to understand the context and this also is creating this vanishing gradient issue and then we have the sequential computation as i said we have this data flow that's going on in a sequence manner so we wouldn't be able to take advantage of the palette processing power that we have in the gpus and if you think about it in terms of transformers right so we have the self attention where self attention is basically a bunch of matrix operations and matrix multiplication happens there so all these operations can be done in a parallel way uh, in gpus when you use a transformer but it's difficult in terms of rn as we are looking like word by word so this is another issue and difficulty handling long dependencies so this is what we have seen so if the sentence is long just like a paragraph and we have different words it wouldn't be able to kind of let's say 
uh, understand the context of the word that is coming later in a paragraph to the word that's coming like kind of earlier so if you look at it together as a paragraph it might be important but the RNNs won't be able to make sense of it in a good way and then we have the scalability issue and RNNs do not scale as efficiently as transformer when it comes to large data sets and larger sequence due to their sequential processing and computational requirements right so we know that the chat GPTs and the llamas are trained with like you know most probably like the entire internet stuff data so if you're going with RNNs it's uh, not computationally efficient as again we have this limitation on how we are going to do this palette processing and so on so these are the limitations that RNN posed but in the case of transformers we were able to kind of address all these things and, and build this self-attention model that has this capability to say that you know I can understand the sentence the words in it and weigh that this word is important in a sentence and I'm going to use this in order to make a decision. So this is about the transformer models and how this transformer model works and the main aspect that you have to remember here are it kind of takes in the input sequence is basically the sequence of data is the input and it's going to generate an output sequence and the key uh, factors about the transformers are the self-attention mechanism and the positional encoding so these are like very key aspects so i hope everyone is clear uh, until this point maybe at a later time i'll make a detailed video on the exact architecture so how this positional encoding sense and what are all the different layers so we have a multi-layer thing and then we have this multi-head attention and so on so we will discuss about all these things in a later video where we'll be discussing about the architecture so that's it from my side and i'll see you in the next upload thanks for watching